Today, NVIDIA is actually going through with it. Intel's new Meteor Lake architecture is worse than last gen, Ryzen 8000G performance is epic, and NVIDIA just teased their upcoming GPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, NVIDIA actually looks to be going through with the release of their 6GB RTX 3050. For starters, a model of the card has already made its way to a Russian retail site. And as you can see, it's the Palette Storm X OC. Not only that, but Video Cards has confirmed through their sources that Palette is planning to release three models. The interesting part is that one of the models, called the Calm X, is set to be fanless. Apparently this is a successor to the 1650 Calm X, which is pretty interesting, but I just can't get past the fact that NVIDIA is releasing a last-gen GPU that's worse. It's one of those things where I'm left speechless. I mean, the 3050 was already an entry-level card when it was released. Now it's a generation behind. And don't get me wrong, entry-level cards are needed. But instead of just making the original 3050 much cheaper, they're releasing a new card with less memory. And right around the time, a ton of games are needing more and more memory. It simply boggles the mind. Next up for today, Intel's brand new Meteor Lake CPUs are actually worse than Raptor Lake. But before I get to that, if you haven't made a New Year's resolution yet, I've got a perfect contender. Learning a new field, maybe something you already love, like computer science. And there's no better place I trust than with today's sponsor, Brilliant, the online learning platform that was made to teach it. In fact, Brilliant was made specifically to teach the STEM field, which is why they've partnered with educators from MIT, Duke, and a ton more. But what I love most is the way they teach you, by getting you to do it with fun, engaging puzzles. So no more sitting through boring lectures, just get in there and do it. To top it off, they have some amazing amazing courses, like their new course on large language models where you learn how modern AI chatbots work. But really, they have a ton of courses for everyone, whether you're a beginner or professional. So don't put it off any longer, because Brilliant is offering my viewers a 30-day free trial when you visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. Plus, when you sign up at Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt, you'll get 20% off their premium membership for life. This is one incredible deal. Once again, that's Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. Now back to the story, you heard that right. Intel's long-awaited upgrade, Meteor Lake, actually has worse IPC than their last-gen architecture. Remember that Meteor Lake was said to be Intel's move into multi-chip modules for the consumer space. It's also built on their Intel 4 process node, so it was expected to be a serious jump in performance. Of course, we knew there were issues with it when Intel skipped Meteor Lake on desktop, but I assumed it was just yield problems like we've seen before. I never would have guessed that Meteor Lake was technically a down grade of a Raptor Lake. This story comes from new benchmarks by David Huang and later reported by Tom's Hardware. The performance comes from Spec in 17, where Mr. Huang tested multiple CPUs to compare their IPC. In the test, he disabled all the cores but one and then divided the results by the clock speed to get a score. This was so he can compare performance per 1 GHz clock. And as you can see, Intel's Core Ultra 7 155H scored significantly worse than their last gen i7 13700H in both P core and E cores. Not only that, but Meteor Lake has LPDDR5 versus Raptor Lake's DDR4. So Meteor Lake had every advantage, meaning Intel's brand new architecture looks to be worse than last gen at a clock for clock basis, at least in this benchmark. I guess it's actually Intel's CPUs that are glued together. Next up, Andy's Ryzen 8000G is set to change the game when it comes to desktop APUs. Case in point, we have brand new specs on the Ryzen 5 8600G that recently leaked through a Geekbench benchmark. As you can see here, the CPU side of things are about what we would expect. The 8600G is a 6-core, 12-thread CPU with a base clock of 4.35 GHz and a boost of 5. That's a jump of 450 MHz higher base clock and a whopping 600 MHz higher boost clock when compared to last gen. So yeah, the CPU is said to be a beast of a chip. But then we have the integrated GPU. As for that, it apparently comes with a Radeon 760M, which comes with 8 CUs. Remember that this is the 
mid-range Ryzen 8600G, and according to this, it was clocked at 2.8 GHz. Now, 8 CUs may not sound like much given the 5700G had 8 CUs, but remember that this is going from Vega all the way to RDNA 3. The clocks alone are 800 MHz higher than the 5700G, and remember that's the higher end Ryzen 7 5700G versus mid-range. So 800 MHz higher, and then the difference in architecture. And in fact, we have benchmarks of the Radeon 760M already, though with it having more thermal headroom, the desktop variant will likely perform better. Still, it's actually able to handle some new games at 1080p fairly well, though some not so much. But when you move down to 720p, it can get a very nice jump. At the end of the day, AMD's next-gen desktop APUs are set to be pretty impressive. And lastly for today, it's official. We've been talking about them for weeks at this point, so it's definitely not a surprise, but Nvidia's next-gen Super GPUs have officially been teased by Nvidia themselves. As you can see on pretty much every Nvidia GeForce social media account, they've changed their profile pictures to this image. Even their Facebook cover photo has been changed. And from this, you can see it's pretty similar to their RTX 40 Founders Edition cards, except it looks to have a white LED right here. Clearly, it's a distinguished it from their regular 40 cards. Either way, Nvidia is definitely set to release a new series of GPUs. This is not something they would do for just say a regular 40 release, especially given the change in design. As a quick recap, don't forget that Nvidia is set to release three Super GPUs, the RTX 4080 Super, 4070 Ti Super, and 4070 Super. Each are slated for release in January with the 4070 Super releasing first. Not only that, but according to video cards, the 4080 and 4070 70 Ti Supers will be replacing their non-Super counterparts, but the 4070 Super will live alongside the regular 4070, likely because it's set to be the biggest jump out of all the Super cards. With that said, it does make me a bit worried about price. Maybe Nvidia will lower the price of the regular 4070. I'm not sure, but they're definitely coming. Fingers crossed we can actually save money. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Nvidia's next-gen super cards? Or are you more excited for Andy's next-gen APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant at brilliant.org slash And as always, have a great day!